By the end of 2022, I had a plan to grow my account to be worth over $25,000. Now, unless in the month of December, my current value increases by 20%, I'm probably not gonna hit that target. Now that's okay, I'm, I'm all right with this because during this past year, it has really shown me the three things that really should be the foundation of my plan for 2023 to grow my wealth. So in this video, I'm gonna go over the three main things that I've learned using examples from 2022. If that sounds cool to you, we'll hit that like button and let's get going. Consistent contributions. This is something I feel I've been doing right from the very beginning. Let me walk you through 2022 as an example. So at the beginning of the year, my portfolio was worth $9,800. And I had the initial goal of $20,000 to grow my account by. So I'm down by 11,200. To make up that difference, I was gonna put $150 every single week consistently, and that would get me to $7,800. Because I'm a dividend stock investor, I was going to use the dividends and reinvest them into the account. So by the end of the year, I'm estimating it's gonna be roughly $800 that I'll be receiving in dividends in total. And finally, I thought that based on the early results that we were seeing in the spring, that a return of 8% was not unrealistic. And that would have added another um, $1,600 to the account, bringing me up to that $20,000. And when I turn those numbers, those where that amount of money is coming from into a pie chart, you can see that over 75% of my planned contributions or the, my planned growth is coming from my consistent contributions into the account. So that consistent investing of my money every week, right off the paycheck, is what really drove all the growth in my account. Okay, let's talk about that 8% return I thought I was gonna get. Yeah, clearly that's not gonna happen, okay? So <laughs> I'm well aware of that. You know, my account right now is down 10%, as you can see here. And when I look at the TSX, it's only down like 6%. So I'm not doing that great. Definitely not gonna be hitting that $25,000 goal but that's okay because the next topic is one thing that I might be able to do to kind of get me there. Invest lump sums. So now you've heard me say two different goals. I've said $20,000 and, and I talked about $25,000. So the reason why there was this change mid-year from 20 to 25 was because I sold, well, my family sold our second car, my Toyota Yaris, my beloved car, and we put that money, which was like $5,500, into a ETF, high dividend yield um, ETF, Vanguard's VDY. That basically brought the whole portfolio value up. And I felt like that was cheating on my overall plan because I really wanted my investment growth to be really what drove you know the major increases. I always set my target higher than what I, my contributions were, anticipating that that the, you know I'm picking some great stocks and things were going to grow, but obviously that's not the case. And so it was also stupid for me to think like that, to think that okay, putting a lump sum payment into my account was somehow cheating because actually that's a smart thing to do. If all of a sudden you come into some money via selling a car, some furniture, an investment, or I mean, um, in some inheritance, you, your income taxes, whatever the case may be, you know, putting that towards your investing is smart. I would first and foremost, so here's some general advice. You know, if you also come into some money that was unplanned and it doesn't have to go to some immediate expenses, pay down your consumer debt, first and foremost. Two, make sure your emergency fund is topped up so then that is ready for you for whatever may come. And then, and only then really should you really be putting this lump sum towards your investing. So that was the case for us. $5,500 was able to go directly into an ETF back in April. So that is our plan for 2023. When we get our tax returns, we're gonna put that money directly into our tax-free savings account to give it a little bit of a bump. And it's not cheating, it's just smart use of your money to make it grow for you. Increase your savings rate. The final thing that our family did towards the end of 2022 was we doubled up the amount of money that we were putting into our investments. 
and as well towards our mortgage. So an extra $150 went to the mortgage on one week, and then the following week, I put an extra $150 towards the tax-free savings account. We had some extra cash flow that we wanted to put to some good use. So because we were able to increase our savings rate, we were able to put more money away. And so by putting that extra $150 every other week into my tax-free savings account, I was essentially able to increase that amount by 50%, which is awesome. And so in the 2023, we're also gonna be looking for other opportunities to increase that savings rate. Increasing your savings rate can be done in basically two ways. Increase your income, get a promotion, get a raise, find a new job that pays higher, find a get a side hustle, you know, start maybe selling some things that you don't use anymore. And then on the flip side, you know, lower some of your expenses. So either cutting services that you're no longer using, foregoing a coffee every day at the, the Starbucks, um, little things like that can add up and it just kind of in increases the divide between kind of like, you know, what you owe and what you're earning and take that difference and put it into your investing. So it just helps speed up the whole process as you find more money that you can put towards, you know, again, put first towards your consumer debt, second, make sure your emergency funds saved up. And after that, put it into your investments. You won't regret that. All these three ideas have one thing in common. They put you 100% in control of how fast your portfolio grows. It's not dependent 100% on the market. When I look at this past year, unfortunately, all the growth that happened was because of my regular contributions into my account, was from the lump sum payments that I threw in, and it was from finding some additional money that I can put into my investments. I'll go over those three things real quickly and just kind of even throw in some little tips there. So the regular contributions, again, set it up to automatically come out of your bank account into your tax-free savings account or RRSP, whatever investment vehicle you're, you're using, preferably a tax-free one. Make it happen automatically so you don't even have to think about it. It makes it so much easier invest a lump sum. So when money comes into your life that you weren't expecting, you know, who wouldn't love that? Hey, a lottery win, you never know. Take that money and put it into your investments after you've made sure that you've taken care of other expenses and other ways to kind of improve your lifestyle. Make sure you're putting oh, the biggest chunk towards your investments to kind of grow that money that much faster. And then finally, increase your savings rate. Find little ways to increase the amount of money that you can comfortably put into your investments and grow your money that much faster. So I'm looking forward to using all three of these options in 22 and 23, especially I'm looking forward to some kind of lump sum, who isn't, right? But using these three ways is definitely the sure way to grow your portfolio, especially in the beginning. And it creates some great habits that you can apply. So I'm going to be recording my progress as I go along in 2023. And I hope you stick around for that. Thank you so much for watching. Um, my name is Steve Coleman, and I hope you enjoyed this video. You know, hit like, subscribe, but share your thoughts in the comments. I'd love to hear what you think. And again, here's that video I mentioned. If these are the three things that I did in 2021, 22 to help lower some of our expenses, that way I had a little bit more savings. Every dollar counts, so check it out there. And until next time, keep it in the green, and we'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.